Chapter three is all about identifying target audiences for your social media marketing campaign. But before we dive into how we identify those target audiences, let's do a quick recap of where we've been. So far, we've covered an introduction to social media marketing and an introduction to the social media planning cycle. We've discussed how to set goals and how to set strategies for the social media campaign. So coming up, what we're going to do is really talk about the digital consumer. Um, a lot of companies already have a general understanding of who their target audience is, who their target market is when they're developing their social media marketing campaign, um, because it is kind of a subset of the overall marketing campaign. Uh, but the way we look at those target audiences are much different, and we have to understand how the digital consumer interacts with media and responds to messages. So we're going to dive deeper into that target audience um, and discuss how we can tailor our social media strategies to reach the right people online. Um, and then in Chapter 4, uh, which is also part of Module 2, we're going to discuss social media etiquette. So let's dive right into the life of a digital consumer. Um, before we start talking about strategically how to identify um, the different groups of people that we're going to target online, uh, let's, let's learn a little bit about what people are doing when they log on to the internet. Um, and, a, and a term for you to understand is digital primacy. We, we live in a world of digital primacy. Um, our culture is completely wired. Uh, today, when anyone logs on or when anyone wants a piece of information, they log on to a digital channel first. They turn to digital first for communication, for information and entertainment. Um, other channels have become secondary. Um, so understanding the wired world and how consumers use digital media will lead us into a discussion on how to target those audiences. Um, kind of a, uh, an interesting fact is that um, the average adult internet user, and this is in the United States, is spending about 32 hours online each month. 32 hours. And this is um, adults over the age of 16. Uh, so we're even including some of that, that young adult group in here. Um, globally, this compares globally, adults are using the, their online about 16 hours a month. So United States users are online double that of the global population. Now, in the 16 to 24 age group, um, the average usage time is almost 28 hours each week. So the one of the largest groups of Internet users is that 16 to 24 year old age group. Um, my question, do these numbers seem high or low to you? Uh, how much time do you spend online each week? Do you spend more or less than that 28 hours? And and think about even the down to the two minutes when you log on to that Facebook app or the 30 seconds you send spending that snap. How much time does that really add up to? Um, and I'll throw, I'll throw one more term at you before we move on here. But um, you guys are all digital natives. And digital natives are people who can't remember um, a time when the Internet was static. You have always had the Internet at your fingertips. Uh, you've been able to turn first to these digital channels for your communication, information, and entertainment. Um, you were born during or after the general introduction of digital technologies, and so you're very comfortable using digital technology. And so we'll come back to this difference in, in digital natives um, and other internet users and how we can separate and begin to target a little further. Um, all right, so now we know people are spending 32 hours online each month. Um, what the heck are they doing and why do they log on? So the first question we're going to answer is why they log on, and then we're going to talk about what they do when they do log on. Um, the, there's a great book called Social Media Marketing, um, and I have a link for this in um, a link to a, a piece of this um, book in the module two. But it, it, it lists impulse that impulses that cause people to get online. This group of researchers has kind of put together reasons why they found that people might go to the Internet. Um, and the first is an affinity impulse. And when we talk about an affinity, an affinity is a liking. Um, so the affinity impulse refers to the idea that social networks or social media platforms enable their participants to acknowledge their relationships with other individuals and other groups. Um, so in other words, people like staying in touch with old friends and new friends. And so they can do that online. Um, it's that liking, that idea to connect. 
The prurient impulse um, is a second impulse that drives people online. And this really occurs when people feel a curiosity about others. Um, and you can indulge in that impulse online via social networking. If you're curious what your neighbor's kid is up to this week, or you're curious as to what your uncle was doing in um, Alaska last month, you can, you can fill that need for curiosity online. So a third impulse is a contact comfort impulse. And when we talk about contact comfort, people have a natural desire um, to feel a sense of psychological closeness to others. And so they can get online to feel this psychological closeness. You might not live in the same state anymore or maybe the same city as your high school best friends, um, but you can still feel very close to them on social media platforms. So a fourth um, impulse is the altruistic impulse, and this really drives people to participate online and specifically, more specifically in social media, because they want to do something good. So when we talk about this altruistic impulse, um, it could be just following or supporting a cause on a social media platform. It could be sharing information about a cause or an event or a foundation with your friends. Um, or it could be connecting with others to, to meet a common goal. So maybe you want to interact with other people who um, share the same beliefs as you or who want work for the same charities as you do. Um, that all drives that altruistic impulse in getting people online and connected. And then the last one is a validation impulse. Um, and the validation impulse allows people to focus intently on themselves. Um, you know that you get a sense of excitement when you get that notification that someone liked or commented or retweeted your content um, or sent you a snap or um, commented on something you wrote online. So um, the Internet really gives people validation um, and allows them to um, feel a little good about themselves for, for what they're doing online. Um, all right, so that's really why people log on. That's Those are some of the reasons why people feel a need to be on the Internet. And um, so let's talk about what they're doing when they get online. So like we discussed already uh, just a few minutes back, the average adult is spending 32 hours a month online, and we know that the group in the 16 to 24 year old age group is spending almost 28 hours every single week. Um, so, so what are they doing? Uh, the biggest the biggest percentage of time spent on the internet is spent social networking. And I don't think that's probably a surprise to anyone, um, but most people when they get online, they are interacting on a social network. Um, most people are also spending their time doing searches. So this is like Google search or information search or reading content. So probably reading the content that they are searching for. Um, you can see on the, on the uh, image here on your screen, um, Surprisingly enough, people aren't spending a ton of a ton of their time online shopping. That's only five percent of what people are doing when they get on the internet. Um, and then they're also emailing or communicating with others or visiting multimedia sites, which would be any type of um, audio or video platform. Um, so if you break it down a little further, this is a there's a great Pew Research article. Uh, from 2010 that I did post in module two so you can go back and take a look at that um, and in the article you can read the research uh, on kind of what's been done on, on how different generations spend time on the internet because we know that groups different age of if different ages of people are doing different things online um, and so it might you know surprise you that the number of people who are online versus who's most active online um, but the millennials are the most active on the internet. And so we still have um, quite a few boomers who are on the internet, who are logged on, who are doing things, but in general, the millennials are the most active. And so what this chart is showing us, the darker the blue, um, the higher percentage of time is spent. So for example, 90 to 100% of all people in most generations use the internet to check their email. And so you can see, again, most people, a higher percentage of people who are online in that generation use the Internet to search. Uh, they use the Internet to get health information. 
Um, and then it starts to change a little bit. So we see that the millennials spend, more millennials are spending time visiting social networking sites or watching videos, whereas Generation X and the boomers are a, a bigger percentage of that group of people are spending their time getting the news, visiting government websites, making travel reservations, etc. Um, so you can get down and kind of see what people are doing. Um, if you get down to that gray, which you see in the silent generation and the GI generation represented here on the chart in the slide deck, um, you know, th those people are not using the internet for those things. So our GI generation of age 74 plus, um, they're really not on social networking sites or they're not playing games online or watching videos. So um, like I said, I, I really recommend that you check out the article, uh, take a look at that and read a little bit further about how different generations are spending time online. And then I'd like you to think about um, your parents, yourself, your grandparents. Um, what do you do similarly online? And how does your activity differ? Um, you know, take a look at the article, take a look at the chart. And uh, does, it, does how your parents um, interact online or how your grandparents interact online, how you interact online, does it kind of line up with this research or are you finding differences? Um, you can talk about that in the discussion board for chapter three.